The current state of the PC market is dire. GPUs that were announced at $500 are being sold directly by vendors at almost double that. And that's if you can find them in stock. For a lot of people, the way to get an actual powerful computer at not a scalped price has actually been a gaming laptop. Me included, I've been staring at the Asus G14 on Best Buy's website for weeks now. But today, I'm not going to be testing the G14 and its brand new high-end AMD APU and GPU. Uh, I'm going to be looking at one of NVIDIA's weakest, actually. One of the weakest RTX cards they ever put out. This? is a ThinkPad X1, a $2,200 laptop with a Core i7 and a 3050 Ti. Now the sticker says RTX Studio and by default it installs the Studio driver, but none of that. I'm going to ruin this laptop's boardroom reputation by running some silly games on it. I also have access to NVIDIA Broadcast, which uses the RTX GPU for only the best background blur removal and audio noise removal for all the joyless and depressing Teams meetings I have with coworkers I hate. The display is an absolutely gorgeous and extremely sharp 2560 by 1600 panel. Unfortunately, the GPU only has 4 gigs of VRAM, so I suspect that's going to hurt it more than it helps. Halo Infinite ran pretty poorly. This is the campaign driving around with laser marines, pretty shoddy performance for low settings and a 75% resolution scale. Honestly, I would either drop the resolution further or cap it to 30 FPS. Multiplayer is significantly lighter than the campaign, however, and I was able to get it up to 60 in most scenes. Unfortunately, all the frame rate in the world isn't going to make me actually good at Halo, so we still lost the match. Forza is significantly better optimized than Halo. At 1200p high settings, which is what the game defaulted to, it looks stunning on this display. I could do night races and drive at 200 plus miles an hour with barely a drop below 60. But aha, this game also supports ray tracing in very specific scenes. Forza Vista. The car inspection mode has ray traced reflections, and boy do they look fantastic on my chrome AMG race car. To spot them, look for objects self-reflecting, like the wing mirror reflecting in the body here. If we exit Forza Vista and go to normal gameplay, you can see how the mirror looks like it's just kind of floating there with no real reflection. The fact this is still running at 60 with ray traced reflections is a testament to how well optimized this game really is. Speaking of ray trace reflections, let's load up some Minecraft with Kelly's RTX pack. Once I got past the very annoying VSync bug, which I have to fix on every single computer I install this game on, the game ran pretty well. A game like Minecraft isn't very reaction critical, in my opinion, so 30 FPS is acceptable. And in this crazy environment, it looks fantastic. Definitely worth the trade off in frame rate. The other RTX game I have here is Cyberpunk 2077. Okay, everything at the lowest with just RTX reflections on. Uh, oh, uh, single digits is, is awful. What if we flip the magic DLSS switch? Sub 30 is, it, it's actually still awful. So I guess even at the lowest settings with just one effect turned on, I think RTX is too much for this laptop in, in any form. In case you didn't know, DLSS is NVIDIA's fantastic upscaling technology, which runs the game at a lower resolution and upscales it using special cores on the GPU itself. Unfortunately, even at lower settings, no ray tracing, and DLSS at ultra performance, the game still struggles. Roughly 40 FPS just walking around the city. Slightly better if you cap it to 30, but it still drops below. And there's horrible input latency. I don't think this counts as being able to run, honestly. Something interesting to note, and something you can use to watch to see if 
DLSS is enabled and all that, is kind of shadow and ghost images over fast motion. It's very noticeable on the back of the car here because DLSS Ultra Performance drops it really down. You can also sometimes see it in Minecraft when you mine in the dark. And finally, I want to celebrate constantly having to re-record audio due to aircraft flying over my real house by flying a digital plane. Luckily, unlike some computer manufacturers, I can still plug a venerable Thrustmaster directly into the side of the laptop. USB-A ports sure are handy. At full resolution and medium settings, the game runs at a pretty solid 30fps in this quiet Botswana bush flight. So let's stress it a little more. Flying a Spitfire low and fast over New York City really pushes it. I mean, it's mostly above 20 FPS, but for some reason, going low over Central Park slows it down significantly, as low as 15 frames per second. Honestly, this is about as stressful as this game gets, so I'm actually very impressed. So what do I think of this then? Well, the laptop itself is actually fantastic. It's built like an absolute brick. The uh, battery life in my experience has been okay, which is as best as you can ask for, for an Intel chip and a dedicated GPU. The uh, screen is absolutely gorgeous. It's a 16 by 10 panel, which I have long been a proponent of. I had a 1680 by 1080, 1050, display for the longest time. I only got rid of it because the power supply would whine when I leave it plugged in overnight. And it's so good to see manufacturers like Lenovo return back to a taller aspect ratio. It's just better for working in general. Uh, the laptop itself is great. The GPU, I think, I think the GPU is held back by the software I tried to run on it. So Cyberpunk is a terribly optimized game, and it barely runs on my 3080. So, you know, asking a laptop that's this thin to run it at, with ray tracing on is just comical. Uh, DLSS does a lot, but the ultra performance mode on DLSS is so ugly. I, I, don't, I, think this, I just think this laptop can't run Cyberpunk. Um, the other disappointment was Halo, but I think, again, that is the game not being particularly well optimized. It's trying to run it at a very high resolution. Uh, I, I actually played a bunch of Halo on a 1650. My old PC downstairs had a 1650, and I played a bunch of Halo, and there's, there must be some sort of memory leak, because it would start out great and get worse over time. That's just... that's just... <laughs> inevitable uh, uh, with that game. So I think this laptop did great, especially in multiplayer, but the campaign was a bit too much. The really big surprise for me was how well it run, how well it ran Flight Simulator, because flying over New York is probably the hardest thing you can do in Flight Simulator. Um, because, because of the way the game works, you're loading in, you're constantly loading in new geometry and new scenery, and New York City is one of the biggest cities in the world. And flying over Central Park, it has thousands of trees and hundreds of buildings that are all on the screen at once. And the fact it was able to run that at 1600p, that was native. Halo was not native. Flight Sim was native resolution. The fact it was able to run Flight Sim at that, that well really impressed me. So perhaps that's <laughs> perhaps that's the target demographic demographic of people buying the uh, people buying a Lenovo ThinkPad is flight sim rather than Halo. Regardless, I had fun. I hope you did too. Uh, and now I have to go back, go and give this laptop back to the person who actually owns it instead of just messing around with it. I'll see you next time.